All right. Well, welcome back, everybody, to Talavir. Sorry, we're a little late. We just had a few things to talk about uh, before the session. So, uh, shall we uh, give a recap of what happened to our adventurers last time? But before we do that, uh, I actually we actually have a couple of announcements to make. First off, there will not be a session next week. Um, our illustrious host, uh, Susie, will uh, have just got back from traveling, and so we'll probably be very exhausted. So we thought we'd take some precaution and not tell you guys like the day before. Um, second thing is, the sessions are, for this are going to get a bit shorter. It's just because people have things like jobs and that. I mean, right? Uh, and get to bed a bit earlier for them will be fine. Um, so, with all that said and done, um, let's get right into it. So, when last we left our adventurers, they found themselves in another plane of existence, one of howling caverns of constantly dripping water and strange gravity. They stumbled across a similar temple to the one that they had found in the Astral Sea, and through exploring it, they... Uh, learnt a little more of the makeup of these buildings, as one of the wings in this one was actually alive. But in order to get to it, they had to make their way past a uh, body of water that seemed to have come from the river Styx. After an encounter with Asphyxius, the Styxian dragon, they were forced to make a bargain with the boatman, who uh, took something from Nis. And after that, they made their way into the temple itself, fighting off a number of guardians of the temple, they passed its trial and were able to make their way up to the summit, whereupon they learned a little more of what happened so long ago before the rubric. And as they were transported back to our <coughs> time, they found themselves without a place to stay, and after looking around, they, be they came across the Opal Rock, a uh, adventurer's tavern um, in which they were treated to a welcome experience and re received a surprise visit from their benefactor so far in the city, one Alvarim Vic, the spy master of Vault, who chastised them for getting into so much trouble since they had arrived in the city, but to some degree admired their tenacity. Saying that they had been gone for a week, it was time to sign up to the tournament, and as they did, uh, they were met with quite a character in the form of an enchantment, uh, focused on uh, only writing down their true names and nothing else as they stood in bathrobes after just having <laughs> cleaned themselves up. So now, as night falls outside and you had just finished your uh, baths and such, we will begin the session. The figure has just vanished into thin air in front of your eyes and now you stand there, some in towels, some in some not. Um in the middle of this quiet bathroom, steam all about you. <sighs> Guess we're signed up then. Ooh. Guess what? the House of Cup from knows I'm in the city. Well, I mean, they did expect you to be. That's true. But now they know that for, for sure that I'm here. Mm -hmm. I wonder yes, how but... many uh, other people are in your situation. How many groups there'll be in this tournament. But I guess we can't figure that out. We're not allowed to uh, learn about that, are we? No. Yeah. Um, Stu, would uh, would Randall know roughly how many people would be graduating? Um, I know so, he wasn't. He, he's not much of a people person, so he might not have spent but, but a lot of time. He, but he, he might know. He, no, he had classes with people. Yeah. So um, you know that depending on um, the person in question, people were often given, though they were in the same class, people were often given longer periods of time after they left before they graduated. However, you'd estimate there'd probably be around 16 people graduating at this time. There were around 30 people in your class, but some of them you kept away from because they seem to be from more noble families or a bit uppity and carry themselves a little differently to many of your classmates. Okay. So, yeah, maybe if everyone that graduated or is due to graduate at the same time as me is involved, then you're looking at 16, including myself. 
Um, whether or not, I, I mean, I, I didn't speak to many of them or any of them, so I don't know what they're capable of, really. I don't know what kind of experience they might have gotten since I left the city. I don't even know if they're still alive. I would assume if they've been staying in the city and, and been part of the House of Cuprum that they're still alive and well and probably none the wiser as to what's going on. To be honest, I'm not so much worried about fighting others. I'm, fight I'm worried about... How did you say? Fight each other? Some of those challenges will be... Cool. Yep. Like messing with our minds I'm sure Maybe. I mean we're quite used to that at this point then <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll be fine yeah we'll be fine there's nothing we can't handle right it couldn't be worse than the astral sea in pandemonium right well yeah I mean every time we come up against something that sounds difficult we always get a bit worried and a bit scared and then we get on and we do it and then we come away better off usually usually yeah yeah <laughs> <coughs> so scratching the, the, the tattoo thing <laughs> you know this could be another one of those things where we're really worried about it when actually we'll be just fine what are we going to do then with a week we've got five days yeah five days before the um, is that before... from from the day that we're in at the moment or from tomorrow from, morning it was from it was from this morning remember you, you learned of it this morning um right. when you appeared back in the flaming flagon um that's five days before the tournament begins um the opening ceremony you don't know how long it is until the first round right okay so from tomorrow morning we've got four days to get everything ready and get ourselves prepared with whatever we need to do hmm. does anyone whatever need that is Anything? Um. Is there... Well, I mean... You want to go find your uh, lizard friend with the lisp, right? Mm-hmm, but don't mention the lisp. Don't apparently. mention the lisp. Don't mention the lisp. Uh, but yeah, that's on the list and... Uh, well, the list seems to be a lot shorter now, so... Mm -hmm. We can get to that. Stu, would I know of any uh, druid types that might be able to help... Um, Taylor with her carving. Yeah, the wooden thing. Yeah. That, that might be in, within the city. Um, you know that um, you were quite fond of when you were younger. There was a couple of elven merchants that were in the city in the Gold Walk. Um, they might know something about it. Um, there is an area to the north um, of the city, about um, half a day's travel, uh, which is a small um, wooded area which. Uh, you were told stories of by a mum when you were younger, as it was a um, a sacred glen of sorts. All right, okay. I'll pass that information on to Taylor. Um, so that might be a thing. Yeah, we might. Be if this, if this, if this gift from the tree ant is can help us with the tournament, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, that could be a, a, a powerful boon. Yeah. Um, just to um, make you aware, uh, Taylor, mm -hmm. your arm still is burning. What the fuck, man? <laughs> so, like, you've just applied deep heat to it to give oh. you a real-world analogy. No. Well, I'm never drinking again. <clears throat> Pints, anyone? You Pints? say that. You say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I think that Glen might be worth investigating that that thing north because when I spoke to the uh, the uh, lovely lovely carpenter in uh, Bracton he mentioned um, like specific druids that could help me with this material so that might be worth a shot um, yeah. seed, seed singers were what they were called seed singers that's it I didn't write it down well, it was just a while we could, we could go and speak to the um, the elvish uh, merchants in the morning mm -hmm. um the glade isn't too far away so if we go and speak to them in the morning they might be able to give us some more information about it and then maybe if that's somewhere we need to go then we can go there yep. there's no point riding out there and, and finding that there's nothing of use for us there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so we Are, should sorry 
So okay, finish, finish. Uh, no, that's Where fine. Are you finished? Oh. Yeah. Are we still supposed to check in with the Everguard, or was that visit from the spy master? Um, that. We no, you mean? Still um, in, didn't we? I don't think. Yeah, was, uh, yeah we had like I a letter and stuff that had evidence of. Um, oh, the that's from Rodal. Oh, for the for the aspire. Yeah, Rodal gave us something, and he wanted us to give us to all the bride mantle. The I dragonborn leader of the vault, uh, Evergard, or the Ironhold, I believe. Uh, no, he wasn't the leader of the Ironhold. Um, he is the leader of. Uh, he, uh, oh no, he is the leader of the Ironholds. My bad. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's because I've got the keen mind feet. It is. Yeah, you remember <laughs> it. I, re I remember everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do. You remember everything. Matt actually has that feet. Not Randall, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My notes came in handy, yeah! yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got my NPCs oh, mixed up. I have so many different ones. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I've started fleshing like all of them out now. So, like, the NPCs bit in my one note is like just going and going and going. Anyway. <clears throat> yes, so, uh, so we could go and, we could go and see her. Uh, it was a her, wasn't it? Uh, Ola. Uh, Ola. Yeah. yeah, female Ola. dragonborn, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we could go and see see her um, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I mean, maybe first thing in the morning we could go and speak to the Elvish merchants while Wolfric is trying to find uh, his blacksmith, Jermaine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. uh, but when we go to the Everguard, I, I would like to be there. See yeah, yeah. I think we should all we should all yeah. probably go. Should we together. do that now? I mean, it's it's now eight p.m. or like nine p.m. because that's when they woke us up, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's like uh, I, we've yeah, just I, I, rested. Yeah, the sun has gone down. I I don't know if there'll be anyone around. We can find oh. out. Right now, probably not. Did we long or short rest this? I forget. Um, long. You long rested. You might not have slept, but you certainly um right rested for a long time you you know but you probably exhausted from uh you know your short but dangerous trip to the uh, land of pandemonium i just so, wanted to know if uh, like preparing to like new spells and stuff yeah you would be able to prepare new spells now yeah cool so, Baller. if you so wish mm -hmm. All right, cool. so should we just call it a night for tonight? Make sure we get some good solid rest and not end up zapped around on various yeah. planes of existence. Well, Have a good yeah, sleep. Well, that's no guarantee now, is it? <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Just don't well, get shoulder I don't check. know about you guys, but I'm I'm gonna get dressed and and see if I can get some food and maybe a drink before I go to bed. Yeah. So I'm famished right now. Sounds like a good plan. Right. Okay. So you're all making your way downstairs to see what uh, food is on offer. I imagine getting dressed first. Yes. Yes, we should all probably get dressed first. Perhaps, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> uh, okay. So as you all make your way um, uh, downstairs after you, uh, you know, uh, garb yourselves, that's the word I was looking for, uh, you find the due to the adventurous nature of this tavern um, the food is served in a way befitting of a large number of people who all tend to be quite hungry due to large amounts of physical activity as such it's a buffet uh, and all you can eat buffet you see there are thick hog roasts large cuts of beef uh, there is what appears to be um, a cooked beast uh, that you don't recognize though it looks to be the shape of a bird it's poultry of some sort however it's probably about the size of Nis um, <laughs> wow it's about five foot long uh, it's this big bird it's a full bird and people are cutting bits off it um, there are huge mountains of vegetables there is rice uh, there are potatoes of all different varieties um, there is a section where it is just different sauces and gravies. There's about five different kinds of gravy there. <laughs> um, we just walked into a cavalry. <laughs> so, it's basically it's basically in a lot of ways a Toby Carvery, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me the guy called Toby but, that works here. I'm much better. Um however it is all you can eat. 
and oh. people just appear to be getting plates and going up. <laughs> I feel like uh, Axon might challenge that theory. This might have All been the best eat. idea I've ever had. Do you know what, Randall? I think it might be, and I pat him on the shoulder as I walk past and just start heaping my plate with like so much food. Yep. So I'm guessing there's other people around as well. There are, yeah. You see a number of people dressed in various different adventuring garbs. You can tell they're adventurers by their you rather unusual dress. No one who adventures dresses plainly, because no one who's an adventurer is rather plain. Um, there are, you see people dressed in plate armor, there are rangers both slung on their backs, um, animal companions at their side, someone is feeding what appears to be a tiger under a table off in the corner. Um, there are all manner of people here, you see there are a couple of um, wizards that appear to be from other colleges, you see the notable bright blue wizard's hat uh, that marks someone as a magus of the College of Quicksilver. Um, and, you know, it's all just an air of camaraderie despite the fact that no one really seems to be talking to each other outside of their parties you get this sense of belonging in the situation due to the fact there are so many like-minded people in here i would like to see if i can eavesdrop on some that look like adventurers themselves and that look like maybe they would they are here to take part in the tournament also just as a note i won't be wearing my armor for this yeah. for a similar reason if the sizing is up I okay. less of who I normally am. So, Nis, you point the party to a table which is next to um, a similar party to yourselves. There's five people in it. Um, and they also have a member and you, you catch uh, the Verdigris robe of a College of Copper member. Mm -hmm. And you, you notice it and instinctively push the party towards a table and you sit down next to them. Your uh, powerful elven ears picking up their conversation. I'd like to make a perception check for me, please. Fifteen plus twenty-two. It's very easy for you to pick up in this conversation. They're talking in hushed tones. They know the sorts of things that be going on right now. But um, you manage to catch um, a bit of a conversation where they appear to be discussing some whatever edges they can get over the competition. Um, you talk about. You hear them talking about um, what potions they're considering buying. Um, seeing if there are any people who specialize in elemental magics and whether they should buy potions of resistance. The, the, uh, there is a very large, big, tall, chested uh, figure sat at the other side of the table who doesn't appear to be paying attention to you and is currently shoveling in mouthfuls of meat. And in between them, you hear, you know, you hear him say, What a potion of giant strength. And then he continues to shovel meat. And then you see a very buttish uh, looking fellow. Um, it doesn't appear to be a, uh, a wizard, but is doesn't appear to be any form of real like fighting type. Writes it down in a journal he's got and sort of silently nods to the others. Um, and in general, they appear to be talking about anything that they can get over the other people uh, in their party. And the conversation slowly turns to them asking if they've seen anybody else. Um, you hear them talking about a figure um, clad in robes of crimson and a deep blue hailing from the land none of them know of and they're trying to figure out amongst themselves where they're from um they say that they think they're in for they're in one of the parties competing but they've never seen them with anybody else but they are definitely the type they carry a long blade which none of them can understand the shape of uh, and no one has seen their face huh Can I see that person in the room? Uh, no, you can't see that person in the room right now. Do they say anything about where they buy the potions? Mm. Um, they're talking about... One of them uh, complains... Uh, the, the wizard, in fact, complains about the lack of magic items in Vault and mm -hmm. says that it's been like this way as long as he can remember, but he might have a special place that he can get some. Um, and he says, a dwarf friend of mine. Mm-hmm. I'll make a mental note of that. Well, I'm making an actual note of that. <laughs> hmm. 
Yeah. I'll, I don't feel like fraternizing in particular, so I'll just try and pick up things here and there. Apart from that, yeah. meeting. Julian's in his pocket dimension, by the way. Mm-hmm. Okay. Their pocket dimension. Sorry. Yep. It's all right. I want to go um, make friends with the tiger, but I don't want everyone to know what I can do. No. <laughs> no, just leave the room, turn into a tiger, walk back in. I can't. <laughs> I can at level eight, but I can't right now. <laughs> Damn it. Just walk in like, meow. I'm a tiger. <laughs> meow. <laughs> meow. <laughs> okay, so is there anything else you'd like to do this evening? No, I'm just gonna like just size up everyone. Pack my belly after eating. Yeah, like make just weird like idle chit chat, not making out that we are actually in the tournament. You know, just trying okay. to keep on the DL, but also being all like. Ha-ha. So you're trying to you're trying to not talk about the tournament. Oh yeah, hundred percent not talking about. Yeah. It. Okay, good to know. I want to ask if I can cuddle the tiger. You go over, and um, it's a short. Um, halfling fellow who is about the same height as his tiger uh, and as you go over there he turns and goes hey of course hey his name's Betsy oh hi Betsy I do the hand thing first so the tiger can the tiger nuzzles up against your hand and goes oh don't worry I'm quite tame oh Betsy's very lovely mm. yeah. Betsy will bite your hand off though if they don't like you well I'm glad I still have my hand then hey I can control them if they go off the hook like that, you know. Yeah, seems to like you though. Seems I have a natural affinity for that sort of stuff. Sorry, I didn't catch that last part. I said it seems like you have a natural affinity for that sort of stuff. Sorry, it's me accent. No worries, no worries. <laughs> Not from around here either. Where? What is your name? Uh, my name? Oh, my name's Roderin. Roderin. Hi, no, Roderin. 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 Hi. It's not Rod. It's Rod. Right. Hey, it's not a problem. Hey, look, it's from the Halflands. There, uh, if you go over the coast to uh, uh-huh. the Ulfar, they're over there. Ulfar. Yes, hey. There. Hey, it's not. Well, it's an alright place. Just don't go to the human settlements there. Or maybe you do. Actually, they're not that bad. Rokar, though, that's the place you don't want to go. Rokar. Hey, Rokan. Rokar. Wait, Rokar. It's, it's in the south. It's in the southeast. It's just... Well, the people there, they're, uh, they're quite barbaric type, you know. The ruler tries to keep them in check. He's a good man, but, well, when you get like that, they're not the best of people. And he sort of nudges his adventuring companion, this thick built half orc who turns around and goes, uh, Watch what you're saying, little one. <laughs> Use you like a rock again. And Rudder goes, Back, it worked well last time. But I don't really feel like having the sensation of being run for the air again. Anyway, yeah, it's been nice to meet you. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. What's your name? My name's uh, my name's Asafia. Hi, nice to meet you. Oh, it's nice to meet you, Asafia. That's a lovely name. Whereabouts is that from? Oh well, my mother really, really loved her little adventure stories. I don't know if you've ever read the the Queen of Thieves. Ah, oh, you know, I have myself. I had aspirations of being a thief when I was younger. Problem is, I shout too much to be a thief, so I became a ranger instead. It's very good for scaring away bears. I can be quite mean, quite make, make quite a mean face. Sorry, I've had a lot of beer this evening. I can make quite a mean face if I try hard, though. Oh, but you're so lovable. Aye, but you won't be so lovable when I stick an arrow in both your eyes at the same time. Mm, yeah, yeah. I can imagine that. I can imagine that. I don't think anyone's lovable who sticks an arrow in, into my eyes at the same time. Eh, hey, no. Especially when one of them's on fire. Mm, mm. You make a good point. Well, it was nice arrows. meeting you. <laughs> I'd see you down Hi. the road. Perhaps you will. Uh, are you taking part in the tournament, by the way? Did we agree on anything saying about the tournament? No? We haven't oh. been talking about it. We haven't been talking about it, yeah. I'm uh, not myself. Which, We're just here to watch. Which tournament? Oh, oh, for the the wizard people. Aye, the graduation tournament. It draws in, draws in quite a crowd from the rest of the time. Hmm. Yeah, you know, there are a few people here. They're, they're recruiting for adventuring guilds, so uh, they often come here to see if pe- they can snatch people away. Ooh, it seems see. that a lot of the a lot of the, go- the guys that are local to here, you know, the House of Copram sorts, they're always mm-hmm. very eager to get snatched away. It's almost as if they don't want to stay in town so much. <laughs> oh. Well, 
Not sure why, but they often send them on quite dangerous missions. Yeah, I don't think I've, I've had much to do with them. Oh well. Hey, it's not a problem. Well, if you are into in a tournament, good luck. If yeah, not, wait, I'm, if you're I'm, catching I'm, around, we can have a drink one night. I'm going to think about it, thank you. Ah, oh, it's not a problem. It's been lovely to meet you. Lovely hey, to meet you. Say too. goodbye, Betsy, and Betsy's goes. Mm. <laughs> Bye, Betsy. <laughs> not very talkative tonight. Sorry? Said they're not very talkative tonight. Do they usually talk? Well, no, but just, you know, like you say, your dog talks when they bark at you. Do tigers do that too? No, they meow. I like a big oh. kitty. Mm. This kitty's got claws, though, you know. Well, I'd hope so. It would be a horrible thing to declaw them. Hey, well, you know, some people know how they are. No respect for nature. Mm -hmm. I turn around, go back to... Hey, right, catch you around. Hi. As soon as you get back to the table, I'm like, tell me everything about the cat. <laughs> well, the cat's name is Bitsy. <laughs> <laughs> and they will bite you if they don't like you. But yeah, I think I was lucky there. And I lower my voice at that point. Can I make sure? Can I can I say make sure no one is actually listening in? Make a stealth check. However, use charisma instead of dexterity. Uh, that's natural. <laughs> fucking twenty. <laughs> Yay. Oh yeah, your voice is so low that even Taylor can barely hear you. <laughs> what? What? Oh, my giant ears. <laughs> what? Um, no, I just want to say, and uh, they were sort of openly talking about the tournament. I don't think it. It's a big deal. At the deal. end of the tournament. Yeah, yeah. They asked me if I would. Uh, by the way, my name's Asathea. To that guy, so uh, the guy I, so the I don't guy know. The tiger, I, the guy with the yeah. tiger is entering the tournament. Uh, no, he, he said he wasn't. He was not. Oh, sorry, I didn't. No, he said he wasn't. Uh, but what he said and what he's actually doing. Yeah, I did an insight check, so. I mean, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't mumble at him? Oh, that's I didn't. I didn't. That's a good thing. I was too busy with the cat to pay mm -hmm. proper attention. Maybe that's why he has it. It distracts everybody. If no one wants to right. inside the guy with the tiger. <laughs> 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 Huh, okay. But they're a well, ranger and they uh, were suggesting that having eyes poked with arrows on fire is not too healthy, so yeah. there's a mm -hmm. chance. Mm -hmm. There's uh, a chance as a fighter. Okay. Well, I'm going to love you and leave you guys because I am full and sleepy and uh, yeah feeling good especially now that spy master's not here so uh, might be though <laughs> he's always watching always especially when you go to bed even mm. when you're pooping <laughs> especially okay well thanks for that <laughs> now I, I'm super I, paranoid I fist bump Taylor <laughs> under the table <laughs> <laughs> I make my way back up to my room and then like check under the bed in the cupboards <laughs> like I'm just checking everywhere like making sure the window the, the curtains are drawn like I don't I'm not going to leave anything up to chance I'm going to make sure that the, this guy is not in my room before I go to sleep what are you like waving your arms around and everything and... yeah I'm like just like waving my arms around checking under the bed opening the cupboards like making sure there's no like everywhere Make an investigation check. I'm gonna use one of my new dice. I'm gonna use my orange one today. Orange. Uh oh. Uh, twelve. Oh twelve. yeah, there's no one there. Totally no one there. Alright. <laughs> I'm. Uh, is there a, is there a chair in this room? There is. There's a little okay. desk as well. I'm gonna put the chair up against the door and then, and then go to bed. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What about the rest of you all? Yeah, I'll eventually make my way upstairs to bed. Okay. I do want to tell them about the Adventurers Guild as well that they're taking people. Away. Just everything, basically. I okay. Heard from that conversation. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Uh, yeah, I want to head up to... Uh, do we share rooms in this place, or do we have individuals? You have individual rooms. Individual rooms. Yeah. Right. Five in a row, and then there's the bath at the end of the hallway. Right, cool. Uh, yeah, I'd like to go to my room and... Um, yeah. Uh, cast Sending. Okay. And... Uh, no, shall I tag you now, or shall I message you it? You can message me. If, cool. if, unless you want to say it out loud, I don't mind. Uh, no, I'll just say it out loud. Okay. Uh, it's to my sister. And it's... Um, hey, Sickle, because it's her nickname, because Icicle, but she's a bit sharper than that. Um, hey, Sickle, it's Pup. I hear you've become a grand rune scribe. What does that entail? You're dealing with the hourglasses. And that'll be all I can manage. Because it's 25 words, I think. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright. So, as you lay down the ritual for the spell, uh, place your shield at the centre of it to act as the, the focus, you mumble through the... Uh, the incantation, the prayer, um, and as you do, the soft blue glow of Helm surrounds you for a moment and transfers to your shield as the words appear like scrolling text across it before they begin to filter off from it like mist rising from uh, from a hot drink, vanishing into the air. Now I wait. Oh, now you wait. Cute. Yeah, so mm -hmm. um, you don't seem to immediately get a reply. Fair enough. Um, was there anything else you'd like to do before you go to bed? Uh, no, other than that I was just going to head off to actual bed and get ready for the next day. Okay, Arxen, this is there anything you'd like to do before you head to tonight, or shall we just fast forward to the morning? No, I'm good. Yeah, me too. All right. So, as the um, the sun finally sets in the distance, and you all uh, drift off into your sleeps or trances, the night passes quickly for all save one. Throughout the night, Taylor, your trance is racked by constant uh, spasms of pain, the burning in your arm getting stronger and stronger, until eventually you pass out, unable to keep your concentration any longer. You come to many hours later, feeling incredibly groggy, and as you look over to your arm, you see now the cracks have widened. Small crystalline features grow in between them, and whenever you move your arm quickly, it, crack it crackles slightly. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Um, have, have I heard of anything like this? Like, crystals and shit forming in people's bodies? Do I know anything? Uh, make, make an arcana check. Oh, fuck. Okay, big new dice. Let's go. Ooh, 19. Um, it's obvious to you that this is some sort of... Um, it, it's associated with the, the lay to an extent. Mm -hmm. You're unsure what it means, but you know it's associated with the lay. And you can hazard the guess that it, it's a continuation of what's been happening to your arm in some way. However, you are not aware of enough of what has happened since you've never seen this before in your tribe, since no one has done what you've done. Mm -hmm. um, you don't know what effects this will entail um, however you get a sense of growing power in your left arm, a sense of strength emanates from it cool cool balls are really bad balls are really cool Okay. well um, as I get ready for the day I'm gonna like hide this arm extra to okay. bundle it up more yeah is there anything anyone else would like to do in this morning? um because while you're doing that, Wolfric, uh, you wake up in the morning to a reply. Um, it simply states, Good morning, pup. I was asleep. 
The Grand Rune Scribe is the leader of the house. I don't get much sleep these days, but it's worth it. And that's the all you get back from the message. Okie dokie. I'll just write that down. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll get ready and... Um, You know what, no, I'll just, I'll send back now as well, and um, I'll say, uh, congratulations, uh, you've always been an overachiever, uh, I'm currently in Vault, helping a friend graduate for the House of Cuprum. I'll okay. That. Um, you get a reply back straight away, um, and you hear the tone of your um, your sister's voice takes a worried slant to it in this message. It says, "Beware, their dealings are dangerous. Something is not quite right, but you did not hear it from me." And the final word is just "drev here." It was what? Trevhir. Uh, Trevhir is the um, the city state to the north. Right. The one that was racked with an explosion. Hmm. Uh, because I can do it again, I'll just reply with, "I know. Don't worry. I heard it. Uh, no, I know. Don't worry. I've already heard this." Okay. Um, you just get back, stay safe. And I'll leave it at that. So that was one from last night, which I would have got back from sleeping, and yeah. then another two. Yes. Cool. Just um, is, it a rit is it a ritual spell? Uh, it's an action, actually. Oh, but can you cast it as a ritual? Uh, doesn't say. Don't think I... No. Okay, right. So, yeah, it's an action. Cool. So that was that. Is there anything else anybody else would like to do before you go out for the day? Anything you'd like to do in your rooms? I'm going to have another check just to make sure that the ha the the the, the uh, chair hasn't moved and that the window hasn't been disturbed and that no one's been like looming over me while I've been asleep. Make another investigation check. Okay. That's a natural one. <laughs> you are so sure that no one is in here, you feel calm about it. Good. Good. I'll put the chair back where it was. Um, so, as you all ready yourselves for the day um, to set out, what would you like to do? Um, I'll grab oh. Randall and be like, so do you want to check out the, the elf shit we made today? We will go and speak to the elven merchants in the gold walk. Cool. Um, Wolfric, do you need a hand locating the blacksmith, or do you think you got this? Uh, I I think I can manage. Uh, you okay. if you want to go with and uh, take tail out to uh, see mm -hmm. these guys, I feel like I can manage on my own. Would I would I know of a, a, a lizard with a lisp blacksmith? Would I be able to point him in the right direction at least? Um, yeah, Wolfric will, knows the general direction it's in already. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, um, as for yourself, uh, swords and armor are not what you would know. No, I know. Maybe. I know. Um, so you wouldn't know, but you'd know that, that the blacksmiths are generally found um, to the south because right. um, the wind blows um, in such a way that it doesn't blow things from the south into the rest of the city, it blows it out from the city, so the, the bottom of the gold walk. Right. So to, to make sure that it doesn't cover yeah. the city and. Sutton such. Um, Asafia, can 
Can I borrow <laughs> a bit of the party funds just in case that anyone I meet today might require money for their services? Oh yeah, yes of course. This is also I'd... a good idea for me potentially. <laughs> Who wants See? me? I've got the good. <laughs> <laughs> just there with shades on like eight. Are you going to have to like run between shops? This will we'll, we'll go. Yeah, we'll go. Fine. How much do you need, child? <laughs> like fatherly, sort of motherly. Um, Can I have my pocket money? My <laughs> um, just as an aside, Taylor, you have something in your journal. Oh, cool! I will check that out. Um, I don't. I don't actually know um, how much I would need. I'll just do you. Do you know anything? Uh, I'm... Then I'll I'll go with you guys because okay. um, if we're sent out into that fleet thing. Yeah, well, we're not going to leave without everyone. Okay. We've we've still got four days, so we can. Right. And just. I mean, a thousand would probably be a thousand would be way more than enough, right? Mm, not sure. Take ten. Huh. <laughs> no, 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 no. We have we have thirty thousand. Oh, yeah, I know. Shit. Let's not let's not let's not go crazy. Um, do we want to be carrying around that kind of money? Though? No, like, God, no. Take so, a candlestick. A five, <laughs> a candlestick. I don't know. Five five hundred. Yeah, um, I mean, if if that's not enough, we can always be like put an instalment down, right? Surely, and come right. back. Sure. Okay. Is that okay, Ness? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll, I'll I'll let Taylor carry it though, because if we get I, mugged, I'll... I can just turn into a horse and run away, and it comes with me. So exactly, exactly. I'll give you a thousand, yeah. just to be sure. Okay. Okay. Arkson, you're going to go with uh, with Wolfric uh, to find out about what this blacksmith might be able to do for you. Uh. Yeah, can do. You might be able to make you some fancy play. I don't know. That, mm. Like, I quite like my ability on this uh, half play at the moment. So I don't know. Well, we can only go and see. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe he's got helmet. like a fancy sword of destruction and vengeance. That that already has, exist. I, I already, I already has have a fancy on. sword of destruction and vengeance. So I this one. <laughs> Boots of ass kicking. It's Maybe it's like slight, <laughs> slightly bigger and slightly shinier than the one. Any we've got. any boots that Axon puts on become boots of ass kicking. I think that, that is true. <laughs> I don't think it's the boots that do it. No. Well, I don't know. Maybe maybe they've got. I mean, the alternative is that you can come and hang out with some uh, elves. Oh, you can do your own thing, I suppose, if you want to. Because you like 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 woods and and. Nature shit, right, Axon? You like all flowy materials and ponsiness, right? That's your alley. <laughs> I don't know what gave you that impression. <laughs> Axon's seen about five trees in his life until he started adventuring salt scale. <laughs> <sighs> Alright. Hey, uh, so, team... so uh, shall we split up and then meet back here at the pub yep. at the end? Mm. Grab Before some we and then... disappear and yeah, that sounds good okay. to me. Yeah, party split. Hey, <laughs> I promise not to try and one v one any elementals this time. The holy boys going off well, by I'll themselves. You. I'll make sure that you don't. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. We'll see you in a bit then. Bye. Have fun. You Don't like? mention the lisp. I will remember that. Or the tournament. <laughs> or the what? Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so. Okay. To the elves. Elves. Did you all uh, make your separate ways. Um, uh, you wander off into the city, some of you heading north um, to where you know the uh, elven merchant that you are uh, most fond of has found uh, Randall and um, the other two of you, you make your way to the south of the Goldwalk looking for Jermaine. Um, 
as you're closer to the south of the gold walk uh, Arxon and Wolfric you find your way to where you're looking for first um, the streets around here are covered in hay and sawdust um, in order to soak up the uh, residue like sparks and such and to keep the dirt um, off the streets as the many different forges and blacksmiths um, around the area constantly hammer out and you can hear the burning uh, sound of the coals within uh, this area here appears to be far more active in terms of um, metalwork than the dwarven enclave was which for you Wolfric coming from Hjalteheim is something rather confusing the dwarves there are not nearly as lethargic as the ones here but nevertheless you press on into this area eventually you um, spot um, throughout the usual f human figures um, that man each of the individual blacksmiths here there is one who stands far taller and um, as the sun catches their back as they are currently um, crouched down uh, appearing to pick something up from the floor as the sun catches their back you see a, a glistening of uh, deep algae green scales um, pocked marked with uh, sort of a mid okra uh, scale in between them um, a, a scaled being who um, is very broad shouldered um, and is wearing from the back you can see they have an apron tied um, down the front and light colored slacks that are c uh, like covered in uh, burn marks and soot stains from the um, uh, from obviously working in the forge and they're tucked into heavy walking work boots cool I'm just trying to remember the name of the person that actually told me who this was. Was it? It was someone in Bracton. It, it was someone it? in Bracton. Um, it was one of the tieflings. Wasn't the one that ran the bar? It was the one who ran the ever uh, a resolution. Uh, yeah, resolution. Oh, you were told to see them by resolution. Okay. Yeah. Just okay. making sure I remember the name. Yeah. Uh, oh, right. yeah. yeah, yeah. Resolution is the leader of the ever Everflower. Yeah. Yeah, because I know there were there were two um, tieflings there. There was Resolution, and there was the one that worked at the bar, but that which was Chariot. Yeah, cool. Just check it. Mm. Before I went in, it's like, hey, Chariot sent me. It's like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's an open fronted forge, like most of the forges here are. Um, this appears to be one of the few um, blacksmiths in the area that is um, both a forge and a blacksmith. Um, right. It appears there are forges which are made for making bars, and then the bars are, seem to be sold in the same ecosystem to blacksmiths. Um, but this this is a larger shop, and it has both. Um, it has a sign out front that says um, Jermaine's Armories. Cool. Uh, I'd like the to... Like the figure is still crouched down, and it is fumbling underneath a workbench trying to find something. Uh as I'm walking up, I'll just announce, uh, Jermaine. You see the figure stops, his shoulders and back straighten as they stand up. They sort of begin to turn to you and you see the long lizard snout. Um, and as they stand up now, the, you can see there is a long row of black scales right the way down their back. Um, and as they, as they stand up, they turn to you and go, yes. That's up bow my head and uh, good day I was uh, good day to you I am Jermaine Shack. welcome to my blacksmith thank you very much uh, my name's uh, Wolfric and I was uh, in fact I was told to come see you from a mutual friend potentially um, resolution all the way ah, over in yes I sent to Shandu. Her father was a good man. So I hear. They gave me some help in my younger days. Well, now they're helping me by pointing me to you. Uh, I hear you do very good work. Yes, I am one of the most well-renowned blacksmiths in all the land. Very good. Uh, I wouldn't mind learning a few things from you then. You see now they stand up to their full height, towering almost a good foot above you. They're far wider than you as well as their muscles flex. They are wearing no shirt, just the, um, just the blacksmith's apron. As they look down on you and they go, Are you 
a warrior as well as a blacksmith. I am indeed. Do you know how to make a blade? I would assume so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I do. He looks up at Oxen. Who is your friend? Uh, this is uh, a friend of mine I've been traveling with. Uh, a gesture of if he's not walked up the whole way. And uh, so this is Oxen. Well met, Oxen. Hello. <laughs> I'm just stuck between scales and scales. <laughs> you are a noble looking one, not like my kin. Are you a dragon bond? Uh, some might say that. Would you yes. say something similar to this? No, I am, unfortunately, a lizard folk. My people are not as noble as yours. They cast me out when I was younger. Uh, that's such a shame to see such... Sadness. S word, S word, S word, S word. Sadness. Sadness. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> they did not think that my skill was worth because of my malalignment. Some sort of syndrome, would you say? They said that I was cursed by the gods as my body and my mind were not the same. How so? I was born with not this body. It is only due to the generosity of my you see, as he begins to talk about this, his lisp falls away. Of my adoptive parents, they gave me my true self. <laughs> I was born in the body of a woman, but my mind has always been of a man. I see. Your people, they are far more accepting now. Perhaps I will accept you. Make me a blade. Hand to me. I am fucking no. No, not you. <laughs> this one points to Wolfric. Sorry, so silly of me. <laughs> Uh, okay, it is don't okay. You? I understand that sometimes I am hard to understand. My physiology makes it hard to speak your language sometimes. I understand. Uh, I will. I will get right on this and get to work. Okay, make a blacksmith check for me. Cool. So that would be... Um, uh, make it using strength, please, for me. So that's strength, proficiency, and... Is that just that? Strength, strength and proficiency, yep. Yeah. And then a d20 roll. That would be a good Ooh. one. Uh, well, I thought it was a 19, but it's a 16. So it's oh, still no. okay, but it's not as good. Uh, so that would be 23. Okay, um, and so what, what exactly is it you're wanting to make? Um... Well, being a cleric of Helm, uh, a, a long sword would be nice. Okay. Stick to my roots. A long sword, okay. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything specific you'd like to add to it? Um, with a roll like that, you know, uh, 
you can add some sort of flair or such to this unless you know do you want to keep it nice and spartan you know well made but you know focusing on the finish of the weapon as opposed to making something fancy mm. uh, I'd like to make it um, quite simple but um, would I be able to uh, sort of mark the blade as I like to say like sort of like a, a craftsman's signature yeah, um, of course. Yeah. Um, what, what does your signature look like? Um, well, it'd be essentially like my initials, but um, in rune form, if I would be anywhere able to do that. Dwarven yeah. Runes, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Cool. I do that. Yeah. All right. So as you finish the stamp, you hear the as you brand the metal um, by putting it into the acid bath to etch your way where you would... Uh, you, know, you would put your creator's mark and as you do you see the looming form of Jermaine over your shoulder blotting out the sunlight from behind you and they go yes you are quite the craftsman you may keep that sword I have a request of you I have been searching for someone of great repute in combat and in the art of creating I am um, but a modest creator. I cannot leave my forge, and I have not much in the way of savings. I send my money home to my family to pay for what they helped me do. But I wish to see a blade of such great creation that there is nothing greater in the world than it. I want you to find me a blade worthy of story and song. I wish only to gaze upon it once. I that see. It's all I ask of you. Um, I'll pull the uh, glass bin longsword to show him uh, at least that. And I said, for now, during my travels, this is the finest sword I have come across. This is very old. The forging on it is great, but this is a simple blade compared to what I am looking for. I see. You shall find it, I know it. But I must ask, is there anything I can make for you? I have many materials in stock, both rare and common, and I will make it for you for a good discount in exchange for what you have done for me. No good deed should go without repayment. I understand. Uh, and as you think about that, yeah. both of you, um, we're going to skip over to the um, uh, northern side of the Gold Walk as the rest of you three find yourselves standing outside of a beautiful structure um, that is set apart as a... Uh, yes, Nick? I'm not there. Aren't no. you? Where, where are you? I was technically with the others. I know what you said, too. I just... I didn't have anything to say anyway, but else I wouldn't have to give them the gold. Like. Oh, so you're not going to the elfin place? No. Nope. Where are you going? Are you just... I was thinking about sticking with the... Uh, Wolfric and Oxen. Yeah. Oh, my apologies. I didn't know. No so. worries. It's... So, well, um, you find yourselves outside of um, a very splendorous building carved out of a pale white wood, um, and the familiar sign hanging outside, um, Randall, the Menagerie of Mysteries, a elven-run establishment here de dealing in all manner of curios which satiated your drive for knowledge during your youth. Do I know the name of the AE people that run it? You do. Um, Unfortunately, um, you remember that the uh, one of the uh, two owners of the place, it was a joint venture between two Elvish brothers, um, one of them uh, was unfortunately killed at some point in time during your youth. Um, you don't know what the circumstances were, but his business associate, one Chaldea uh, Hekdrela, um, oh God. I can put it in chat. Yes, please. <laughs> You know, those 
those elvish names. Um, is the only uh, owner of this establishment right now. Um, a sort of, by elven standards, middle-aged fellow. Quite welcoming to you in your youth. Okay. Okay then, Taylor. Um, hopefully, uh, he's as accommodating as he used to be the last time I was here. Um, might oh, even oh, give us a on. discount. Sorry, just one second. Can we just retcon a thing? I retcon that I grabbed it, the, the wood from the bag of holding. Because <laughs> otherwise... <laughs> I, I, I assumed you had it. Yeah, yeah. okay, cool. Right. Just walk so, in the street. You're walking through the streets with a huge trunk of... Or a huge... Like... Yeah, on your shoulder. I look super hench, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Except um, you don't want to show people your left arm, so it's just... Yeah, it's just... Yeah, it's even more <laughs> impressive. It's just one arm. Like, <laughs> You find the biggest guy there and just, like, give it a try. On, like, one <laughs> finger. Just... <laughs> <laughs> no, you're one of those guys with the spinny signs. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sorry, Randall, what were you saying? Uh, are you going to leave that outside? Nah, it's fine. I can carry it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm not sure it's going to fit inside the shop. I'll be careful. I wouldn't uh, really ask. So. Actually, it's really heavy, so someone will really have to yeah, try I, to steal I, this. I, I, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, it's going to take several people. Okay, so I'll just lean it up against the wall very carefully. <laughs> I don't want to go bang through the wall. <laughs> okay, as you lean, lean it up against it, you hear a slight creak from the building. <laughs> but it stays. Okay. Um, let's, so, let's, let's head in. Um, as you head inside, you're immediately met with that smell of forest incense that you remember from your youth. That musty scent of pine uh, marked with uh, the strange scent of a moss, which uh, the owner, which Kalia said he got from an elven enclave deep within the great forests. Uh, to you, when you were younger, it, it smelled like old woman's bath water. <laughs> but uh, it's a strange scent. Um, but as you walk inside, it's much as you remember, though much of the merchandise has changed, it's still s shelves all about you, stacked high with all sorts of things in ragged alleys. Um, each of the shelves is different, taken from somewhere else to facilitate uh, as much merchandise in here as possible. You see rows upon rows of things stacked on top of each other. In the corner there is chairs all stacked up. Um, there's all sorts of different things in here. You hear the chirping of a bird somewhere within... Um, the you know within the establishment itself um and as you walk inside you hear the ding ding there's a little bell as you go in well it's pretty much like i remember it which is kind of comforting because it's been a while and lots of things have changed mm. I, <sighs> I can't believe i'm gonna say this but I'm gonna let you take the lead on this one if you know them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <sighs> All right. Uh, I have a look a little. Have a little look around and see if uh, there's anyone about, and just see if I can kind of just catch their eye. Um, there's no one in the front of the shop um, that you can see, though. Um, at the back, uh, there is a small counter uh, with a glass case in it like a, like you see at jewelers um, and behind it there is a curtain it's like a bead curtain except instead of beads it's seashells oh cool I'll um I'll just walk up to the counter and have a little look see if I can see anyone you can't see anyone currently Kalia you hear a sound coming from the back room a bit of a clattering and the clanging the sound of what appears to be um, a teapot being placed uh, back <laughs> on something and I you think, just hear I think we interrupted hello hello Galera are you are you busy are you oh my <laughs> and you see an elven figure push through the curtain resplendent <laughs> in a long deep navy robe uh, with 
big hoop earrings on the side of his elven ears, a piercing in the side of his nose, and uh, like his hair swept back into this long, uh, like very slicked, uh, like elven, basically mullet that flicks up at the back as he comes out. He goes, Randall, darling, <laughs> it's been so Hi. long since I've seen yes. you. Oh, you're looking. Well, you're looking dreadful. Adventuring's yeah. being fun to you, then, isn't it? Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Uh, well, no, 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 it hasn't. Actually, I'm lying. It's been awful. Wondrous, wondrous. Whoa. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, but I'd like you to meet a friend of mine that I have made on uh, my my adventures. Oh, would you look at you? Aren't you just a darling? Oh, I do love your hair. It's so wild and untamed it's like a ferocious mountain bear oh it's just wonderful oh, and I do love your garb as well very rustic it's very ten centuries ago mm, I love it it's so retro oh it's fantastic uh, this is um this is Taylor uh Taylor this is uh Kalia um uh, oh my aren't you just oh what a wonderful couple! I'm so glad you found. No, 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 um, I brought my friend uh, Taylor along because um, we need some information. Uh, hopefully, you have some that might be able to help us. Um, of course, of course. I'm always known for my wonderful information. I know all of the best bathhouses and spas in town. That's <laughs> uh, what I was looking. Yes, for. more about more about druids. Actually, do you know anything about druids? Of course, I know stuff about druids. I know stuff about everything. I am Kalir. You not know that I was just one of the people who told you stories. Anyway, I digress. I'm waffling on about um, all sorts. You know how I get. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll cut to the chase. I'll cut to the chase. Um, clear, my friend. Uh, Taylor yes. was given some wood by a treant. <laughs> given wood by a treant. Man. Yes. I must admit that must have been quite prickly for you. No, 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 no. I'm just wait. behind no. Randall where they can't see. I'm just like fuck you. <laughs> no, no, no. Like the actual wood of a tree. In. Oh, um, I do say that's something I've not really encountered before. You'll have to. Do, do you have it? Can you show me it? I'm well, always in the mood we, for we more curiosities. Do you know what I mean? It's big. So, <laughs> please take me to see your tree and wood. Taylor, do you want to go and get it? Mm, just give me a minute. I take a deep it's breath. It's really heavy, except for when Taylor picks it up, and then she can just, like, one hand. Oh, it's a mutual bond, I see. Come then, let uh, us see this wonderful wood. Just follow me outside. Of course. I must say that bandaging on your arm is very fetching. Okay. All right. Do you mind if we hold hands, Randall? Uh, what? Uh, sure. Okay. Oh, it's just when I used to take you on tours of the shop when you were younger. You yeah, that's your true. hands so you didn't break anything because you were about as accent grown as a bull in a china shop. Yeah, nothing. Nothing's changed. Mm. Nothing's changed as far in as that's concerned. In that case, then I think you will go first. Okay. All right then. <laughs> and Kelly puts her hands on both your shoulders and sort of begins to frog march you out the door. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I go outside and I just sort of go, boop, I pick it up and just hold it like one hand like this. Oh, isn't that absolutely wondrous? What a wonderful piece you have there. I've never seen anything like it before in my life. Oh. Um, hmm. Uh, we, were, we were told that um, to make anything or with it or from it, we would have to find some kind of druidic crafters of some Do you, manner? you and all your infinite knowledge know of any seed singers or pimentic druids in the area? 
a, a pimentic druid. No, I don't know of any pimentic druids around here. I thought that craft had been lost long ago. As for seed singers, I'm afraid not. They're a ponzi lot they are anyway. Always up themselves. It's very annoying. But I do know of local dryers who might be able to help you. Mm. Oh. Do tell. Well, have you heard? Wait, of course, Randall. You know of the Sacred Grove. Mm-hmm. Yes. My mother used to tell me about it all the time. Most of the folks around here just assume it did some elven waffle going on about it. But we elves know that it's more than that. Of course it's more than that. It's elvish stuff. It's always better when it's elvish, but um, the sacred grove from here, uh, back when all of the stuff with the elvish thing went down long ago, there was a dryad there left behind. Uh, their name is Kildarathana. Uh, don't try and spell that. I don't even know how it's spelled. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Could you say it again then, so I can at least phonetically write it down? It's kid and F and R. Yeah, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> uh, perhaps they have some sort of sympathetic connection to stuff. Perhaps you could seek them out and find them. Yeah. I don't know. Really, beyond that. I've not well, that's before. more information than we had before. I'm glad it's not the sort of wood I was talking about, that's for sure. I'm kind of glad about that, too. Because uh, would you like to care to stay for a pot of tea before you go? I have a new source in. It's made from sub sea triton algae. No. Um, I think I might pass. On that, we've uh, we had like a really big, really big dinner last night, and uh, I'm see. not sure it's a. It's probably for the best. It apparently causes land creatures to hallucinate that they're a jellyfish. Oh, yeah, no, that's that might, yeah, no, that's probably not a good, and um, it's probably not a good thing to try on a really full stomach then. Um, if it's jellyfish, you wouldn't have a stomach, because that would be quite an interesting feeling, I suppose. But <laughs> regardless, I won't push you, dear. Okay. okay. Um, can we just step back inside? Uh, just one moment, Taylor. Sure. Of course, darling. Um, sure. There's no one else in the shop, right? No, of course not. I don't get many customers these days. Something... I don't um, know. So, I understand that there's like been this kind of thing with magic items and stuff like that uh, within the city uh, just hourglasses being a bit strange well yeah but just in general with like the, the, the college not liking people selling magical items and oh yes but nothing I sell I sell more curios rather than actual magical things it's only magical items not implements stuff of a appreciable value in sort of combat and such yeah, I was just wondering if you know anywhere that we might be able to get some locally. Make a persuasion check. I don't know. Uh, persuasion. Oh, I've got a good score for that. Uh, 21. Uh, hmm. I suppose I can trust you to keep a secret, can't I? Of course. The dwarves, they don't much like the authority of the college. So they keep to themselves, especially given their lethargy. Don't ask me about that, I don't know what it means, but they're all a bit down in the dumps and have been for quite some time. But a couple of them have managed to sort out some illicit magic items or you know how dwarves like their magic items there's a couple of them it's near the temple of Moradin two okay. houses along knock on the door three times with a metal object and then once you have walk round the back and go into the basement from the cellar from the back there's a magic item depth store down there the three knocks disables the runes right Three knocks, 
metal object. Yes, and then go around the back. Okay. They don't have too much, but they might have enough to satiate what you need. Excellent. Okay, As so things like right. potions and that, it's best to buy them above board. That way you don't draw attention when you show up with illicit potions and items. It's easy right. to say you found magic items out in your adventures. Potions tend to go off after a while. I had a healing right. potion once it tasted of egg. Ooh. Rotten did egg. It, did it heal you though? It did. It smelled like egg for a week. Oh. Swings and roundabouts, though, eh? Of course. I hope you're okay, my dear. This sort of thing is not the sort of thing that you usually were involved in in your youth. No, I know. Um, we're thinking of me and my uh, adventuring party. I've, I've made other friends as well. There's three others that you haven't met. Oh, that's um, good. Does that mean that your imaginary friend's not around anymore? You're not sp I, I asked you not to bring that up. It's fine, there's no one here but his two. Well, I know, but... Your lovely friend is outside, and may I say, she is going to be quite the wife for you someday. No, she's, no it's, not, it's not like that. It's, give, it's it, not... give it time, my dear, give it time. <laughs> no, Ed, although I did see her naked this morning. No, last night. Well, that's a positive. Baby steps, baby steps. Yeah. Anyway, um, sorry, I got distracted. Uh, yeah, we're thinking of possibly entering the tournament. Oh, that'll be very good for you. I hear the top prize is something very special this year. That's all I hear, though. Oh, just very special. Yes. You know, right. the college really likes their cryptograms, doesn't it? Yeah. What do you think of the college? Right, time to go. Bye. Uh, I see. Okay. Fair enough. Thank well, you thank go. you very much for your time, Kalia. It's been um, wonderful it's been... to see you again. Do come back soon. I have some wonderful different teas in stock for you. Uh, okay. Uh, I will I will try and, and stop by again soon. Oh, I can't usually leave without something, actually. Here, let me just get something for you. I oh. rummage around the shelf and eventually pull out a scroll. And I go, ah, yes. This will do nicely. If you're planning on entering the tournament, you thought you should have something that will help your friends. So here, have this. It's kind of old. Be careful unraveling it. It might fall apart a bit, but copy it down. You should have no problem with it. Oh, well, thank you very much. It's a scroll of haste. Wonderful spell. Makes you go faster. It's like you've just eaten some Byzantine cave mushrooms from the Underdark. It gives you oh. quite a buzz. What do these mushrooms look like? Should I ever they're, find myself in the Underdark? They're bright purple and they glow. Oh, so I should be able to find them quite easily then. Yes, they look like a mic in its butthole. <laughs> Does Randall know what a mic in it looks like? Nope. Okay, I will just smile and nod then. Excellent. Okay. Uh, well... It's been lovely to see you, Kelly. Um If we need anything else, I'll be sure to check in with you first. Of course. I know you will. If you don't, I'll come and hunt you down. <laughs> well, we're staying at the Opal Rock, so it shouldn't be too difficult for you to find us. Wondrous. Well, I hope you have a good day, my dear. I will do my best. I hope you have a good day, too. He pats so you well. on the shoulder. Now get out of my shop. Yes, I'm off. Yep, see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You, you walk outside once again to Taylor, who is stood against the wood on that, the outside. Matt, Hi. Why is City Elf so fucking weird? Every City Elf I've seen has been incredibly fucking weird. What is wrong with them? What happens? Do they get into a house and just it all just goes goo -goo crazy up there? What the fuck is wrong with that, dude? What's the fuck? He's just a bit flamboyant. He's a nice guy. Randall, he thinks that we could be a couple. Like, the fuck? I know, right? Don't. Don't even fucking... No. Or I like. just punch him. <laughs> I was agreeing with I'm you. I'm fucking... For a second I saw that thought fucking cross your mind. And no. Fucking no. No. It, it wasn't... No, it wasn't that thought. It was... 
Don't worry, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, yeah, let's just fucking let's, go. This should, is... we go, should we go back to the Opal Rock and wait for Wolfric and Arxen and this? I mean, can, yeah. What time is it now? Uh, it's fairly early in the morning still. Oh, we're out. 11. He said it was like half a day to this place. I know, but I don't really want to go without them. Mm. I guess. What happened the last time we, we one of us went off? Uh... <laughs> no, you're yep. right. We shouldn't go alone. No, it's fine. But put it this way, day drinking. <laughs> And as Rendell says that, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back in five minutes.
Bananas. <laughs> Bananas indeed, and uh, welcome back. Um, God damn it, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost my entire train of Sorry, I was, I was kind of expecting Joe to say something and he didn't. So I was just like, first thing that came the opportunity and you took it. Yep. Oh, so, now, um, having just exited the store, um, Taylor and Randall, you find yourselves in the streets of the Gold Walk once again. It's quite a busy day today. Um, there's a lot of people around. You can see that it appears there are a lot of travelers coming into the city at this point as well, um, probably for the Dortmund. Um, yep. So, uh, I think we're just going to head our way back to the Opal Rock and, and wait for the others to arrive and finish doing whatever it is that they're doing. Okay. As you head back to the Opal Rock, um, we will tune back in to what's going on at Jermaine's. Um, Jermaine, having just asked you um, what, if there was anything that you needed, um, Arxen and Wolfric, and you too, this, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> well, as you can see, I am uh, on a I don't know. Would I be wearing my armor at this point? I'd assume so. You're outside. Yeah, yeah, I would be. Yeah, and I was going to the blacksmith side, but like, oh, look what I got. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I would be. Um, Jermaine, as you can see, I uh, I already have a set of armor. However, the task you've laid before me is quite a grand one, and so perhaps. Uh, if I could commission some armor from you, uh, so something special, something uh, that really expresses your abilities in exchange for glimpsing this sword when the time arises. I would have to take some time to create this, but there is a barrier in my way. I would assume Ever that it would take time. Since I arrived in thought, I have been unable to commission any withards to help me with my practice. It apparently is banned in the city. As such, I could not fulfill your request. I can only use magical materials right now, and not enchantments. I see. Um, I was only made aware of this recently as well. Um, perhaps this is something that we could put a pin in for now. Uh, and my task would also take quite a lot of time to fulfill. So, uh, Indeed, if you are wishing for an enchantment, it takes much time. I am aware. Uh, but, Master Dragonborn, is sorry. there anything I can do for you? I don't know that there is, actually. I'm, I'm quite happy with my current weapon and armor set. I see from the material that it is formed from aetherite. Yeah. Right? Is this a property you enjoy in your armor? I mean, it's, it's alright. I mean, it's, it's pretty good. I don't know if there's anything else out there. Or... It, it, I, it, I don't know. I don't know about armor sets. Like, I don't know what else you make armor from. Like, Tell me. Imbue it with different properties. I hear that your kind can project breaths from your mouths of great power. Is this true? It's not bad. It's alright, yeah. Is your breath? Is it, is it what? What does it do? Oh, um, what is it? Oh, it's lightning. I I did. He, I I thought he said, "Is your breath?" And I'm like, "Is my breath what?" <laughs> Bad? Yes, yes. Especially in the morning. Oh, boo, boo. 
Well, I, if you would allow me some of your funds and some materials, perhaps I could make you something that could amplify your breath and also serve as armor. That sounds cool. <laughs> that does sound cool. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Oops. Warfrick's just stood there and kind of like, yeah, it does. <laughs> so, so what would you, what would you, uh, how much would you charge for that? What's I that? would need, unfortunately, two thousand gold. In addition, I would need something known as a lightning core. Three of them. Did you get those from? They are generally found on something known as a behir. Oh shit. They generally have like? six of them. They are a type of dragon. But I have heard that blue and bronze dragons also have lightning cores. It is apparently a form of discharge made when they expel their breath similar to what we would call a kitty stone. Gross. <laughs> it is quite the store of a charge. Hmm. And you need three of those. I do. Right, well I will be on the lookout for the hares and dragons then. There may be a way to buy them, but they are probably very expensive. Right, okay then. But super lightning breath, yeah. That does sound cool, yeah. I th I think if if I manage to come back with three lightning cars. The Behir usually live in the mountains, and blue dragons, I have been told, live in deserts. Any of them near here? They only kind of built into mountains, aren't they? They build into a mountain. It's a lonely mountain, right. a single spire. Um, there is a desert to the south of Iriand in. The the mystical lands of Tal. That is all I know, as I have not been there myself. Okay. Although I'll keep that in mind then. But if you can find me this, I can make you a suit of armor that will amplify your natural strengths. After all, if we are not comfortable with ourselves, who can we be comfortable with? It's got a point. Okay. Then. Is so there put a pin in for two sets of armor. Is there anything else you would like? Uh. Joe, Joe, move back away from your microphone. Why? <laughs> because you're talking past it, and it sounds really weird. I'll move it back a bit. I'm they, sorry, I was... I was yeah, no, yeah, I know. I it's was, fine. Uh, it sounds great. I just realised I'd never levelled up my breath weapon. Because <laughs> I'm like, it's still 2d6. Uh, I don't use it very often, either. <laughs> anyway. Uh, cool, oh. right, so... Lightning cars, on the lookout for them. Got you. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you would like? Do you happen to have a few arrows lying around? Just to fill up I here. do. I believe we have not been introduced. No. I did not see you in the shadows. Yeah, I was standing behind Axe and I should stop doing that. People don't tend to see me. Hi, I'm Niss. Good to meet you, Niss. Good meeting you too. I, I have many arrows. Do you have any special arrows of sorts? I do not. Mm. That is forbidden to make. Yeah, figured. I have some arrows that you may have, though. 
I can do you a special price as thanks for Wolfric's great deed he is going to do me. That's very nice of you, thank you. One hundred arrows for five gold. Yes, please! <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean... You see, yes, um... <clears throat> Jermaine goes over to a, a small barrel, um, it's like half the height of a normal barrel, and takes the uh, top of it and starts grouping together um, bundles of arrows and ties um, a leather, uh, like a leather ribbon around them, pulls it tight, and comes back and hands you this bundle of arrows and goes, they are tipped in a rock feather. It makes them look beautiful, like moths of fire when they are fired. Oh, they are quite lovely. Thank you very much. And I give him the five gold. Thank you. He pockets it. Oh, if yeah. Right. There is nothing else you will need, then I must get back to my work. I uh, extend my hand for a solid handshake. He takes it and he puts his other hand on and goes, I know that you will not forget this. I see something special in your eyes. And he claps the side of your forearm. I will be back and I will fulfill, uh, fulfill the end of the agreement. Okay. So Jermaine bows their head um, and turns back, picks up the blacksmith's hand that you had used to make the blade um, and instantly is back to work. Pulls um, an ingot out from a chest and places it onto um, uh, the forge and pushes it in with the, on the metal plate and begins uh, once again doing that work. Interesting fellow. Should we head back then? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I have okay. all the arrows. <laughs> <laughs> so as you reconvene at the um, at the Opal Rock, um, it is by this time, um, due to having to make a sword and such and that taking some time, um, by the time everybody gets back, um, Taylor and Randall are about three drinks in, uh, and it's about one in the afternoon. Yep, I've had like three ciders at this point. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're still standing. Oh, I was—I I haven't actually had to stand up yet. <laughs> I've just—I just got three ciders. <laughs> are you swaying on the table already? Well, my, maybe. Maybe. What's oh. it to you? <laughs> it's one o'clock. Well, this is going to be us. fun. I, mm. I, I push what? Randall in the no. forehead to see if he if he uh, veers, veers back. Make an acrobatics <laughs> check, Randall. <laughs> oh God. Uh, acrobatics. Oh, that's an eighteen. Ooh. Randall manages to keep his balance as you push him backwards, and he all springs forward like a bobblehead. Mm. Yep. He somehow managed to master the style of drunken master. Alright. I am he, perfectly fine. You gain six guest out levels in monk. <laughs> but only when <laughs> a certain level of drunk. Yeah. I'm perfectly fine. I don't think that would be a problem in this part. How, 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 how did it, how is it? How was it? It's good. Jermaine's an interesting fellow. Uh, met a sword. Hmm. You made a sword. I made a sword. Yes. And um, right now I've got to be on the lookout for the perfect sword. And I don't just mean a perfect, I mean the perfect sword. A sword he wants to, uh, sword. Yeah, he wants to glimpse upon a perfect sword for at least once in his life. Oh. So I uh, right. I'm going to get right on that. What's the criteria what? for a perfect sword? It's what, long, what, what it's sharp, that, uh, it stabs things. Boom, sword, good, what, done. What about that uh, that sword that that orc had? Something like that, or different? I don't know. I I imagine 
when I see it, I might know. Right. Oh, mountain slicer. Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's what what it means in Orcish. He meant that he said the oh. Orcish name. That Sh- then sure. Okay, who of us in character knows that Volt was sliced by a sword called Mountain Slice of the Mountain? That would be you. <gasps> okay, you didn't miss him out the slice. I'm like, what? Mountain Slicer? <laughs> with my pine, so it slashes. What? <laughs> oh, and he did threaten me with it at one point, didn't he? It's called Mountain Slicer. <laughs> in the library. Yeah. Holy I fuck! I mean, they all give them. But what? Uh, great, so when I was reading about about things and shit, um, it said in this book, through your inks in, that uh, Vault, the mountain it's on, was the reason why it's all like fucky and like in half and two bits and shit like that, is because it was sliced by a sword named Mountain Slicer. By that sword. By that sword, unless the orcs just got like a fake version. But seeing the damage that it did to Axe and in the ground, I'm inclined to think that that was the, like the real McCoy. Mm. Looking, uh, remember, trying to remember back, what what was the quality of the blade? Did it look very sort of orcish and was like grr, mean? It, it was very orcish, yes. Right. Well, it was. There's a blade of song. It was yeah. toothed and it, it wasn't a crafted blade. It was a a blade forged in battle. Right. So that's that's fucking cool, Randall. You saw the tree. I mean, that's a that is a blade that you know. That's a really? that has has yeah has history to it. But I mean, then it again, might not necessarily be the same the one that he's after though. When there's a, yeah, when, but when there's a a legendary sword of legend, there will always be uh, many people who think they wield it. Mm. So, whether or not that's the real mountain slicer. True. I mean, Who's like, it did a four foot divot in the ground. This is true. It, it you know, it, it took, it made a little crevice. Mm. Crevasse. A fucking one of them shit. I don't know, I've had a bit of booze. A croissant. Are you turning into mm-hmm. a city elf? Well, <laughs> I swear to fucking God. City elves are the weirdest. Randall, like that dude, I don't. I don't fucking. I Why? Don't, he, was I'm just, still... he was just a bit, you know, it's just a bit eccentric. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's I all. live in a city now. He had a fucking mullet. That's just his thing. He called my clothes retro. I wouldn't know. What does that even if, mean? I don't, I don't I don't know. I, I, I don't mean, know. I, at least he didn't call your look rustic or anything. <laughs> yeah, he did. What? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. He was like, oh, how quaint. Oh, look at you. Oh, I'm, right. I'm like, I'm not a fucking exhibit, you prick. Step off. But no, he was all like, Ooh. what is wrong with city that's, elves, man? That's just his way. That's just his way. Just He's always been like that, uh-huh. as long as I can remember. Uh-huh. He means well. I was uncomfortable. You're uncomfortable around everyone. No, I'm not. <laughs> See? See? Stop trying to punch your problems away, Taylor. I mean, by that, I mean, stop punching Randall. No, but it's fine. <laughs> I feel like that should be quoted forever and always as well. <laughs> but we did find out some shit, so um, you might be interested in this. Uh, in this. Ness. Mm. Mm. <laughs> we have to go talk to a dryad. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dryad. Arkson, you ever met a dryad before? How much do I know about dryads? Uh, make a nature check for me. Yeah. Oh, Frick, ever met a dryad? Ten. Unfortunately, you don't know them beyond their name. I imagine I wouldn't have met one, but. Would I know it? Um, books are a thing. You can. You can make a nature check. Um, you, Oxen, to you, um, you've barely seen trees before coming Sweet to every <laughs> Not Not alone a living room. Uh, I got a seven. So. No, unfortunately, no. I want to so this will be this will be a new experience for all of us then. Yeah. Right. 
Shall we head out there now? Well, you you get... It's like half a day do. north. I mean, we do yeah. still have to get that information to the other guard at some point. Oh, right. mm. Whether yeah. we want to do that first or not, and whether or not well, it's, it's Axon just... is allowed near the other guard, because it was the other guard that was trying to arrest him. It's gonna, it's gonna take about half a day to get there. Uh, so if we leave now, we'll get there probably just after dusk. Oh, I mean, I know I'm the good way. To do either. Kind of. If we want to go first thing in the morning, so we're not travelling at night and stuff. I don't know about you guys, but I'm fine in the dark because I can see shit. Randall, Nick, you're probably good, but I we'll can't. Think. Yeah. And um, you know. Give me a nature check, please, uh, Taylor. Uh, Joe, you're a bit echoey on your mic. I think you might be a bit mm. too far away from it. Nature to do. Uh, yeah. 15. Uh, let's try that. There we yeah, go. Um, so, growing up um, near the forest on the edge uh, of the... Up. I'm getting used to everything, sorry. sorry. Um, growing up on the forest near the edge of the um, continent, uh, you were obviously... Um, uh, uh, party to a number of these sort of sacred glens and such um, even though your contact with forests as a druid was limited compared to your contact with the coast you'd know that oftentimes, due to their connection with elves um, and the sylvan sorts uh, that they are very much connected to uh, Sehahin Moonbow and Coraline Lefarian which means they are usually best to visit at night on oh, the cover of shit. the moon. Cool. Now let's go tonight. Let's go. Okay. These kinds of no, honestly, God, these these kinds of places are better at night because of their connection to like moon gods and sure. shit like that. It's and someone support Randall for the first. Tuesday? I'm fine. I'll probably carry him. You know, I don't need to be carried. I'm a baby. Yeah. You are right, Randall. Just... Do you yes. need a cup of water, a little sit-down? No, it's not, I'm fine. <laughs> Randall, Randall, level 20 can finally manage more than one beer. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> That's the plan. <laughs> and grow a beard. No beard for Randall. Just, no, just a thin no, no, no. stuff. Just a wispy, no, like... The, 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 the form of the beer, just when he tries to wipe it away, it's just such as bomb. It's a magic, a magic item, the beard of bearing. <laughs> the beard. Oh. Right. Right, get, let's, let's go get a dry it. Let's just fucking go. That way. Okay. The door's behind you. Oh shit. That Randall's way. gonna be navigating in his pissed. <laughs> I'm hey, Randall. Make a constitution saving throw for me, please. Can I beat him out of drunkenness into being sober for no, advantage? That's good. No, that's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> what did I just tell you? Uh, constitution. Saving throw. Yes. Uh, 22. Okay. Um, by the time you've reached the front of the city, the brisk boreal air of Iriond has knocked most of the weight of the beer out of you. And right now you feel very lightheaded, but your mind is beginning to come back to you. And your stomach is reminding you why you don't drink. I was drinking cider as well, not beer. Mm -hmm. I quietly hand him a water skin. There's a difference. Yes, oh, no, there I'm, is a difference. I'm a non -alcoholic He's more likely to burp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Don't burp into the water skin. <laughs> no, no. <Ew>. no. <laughs> right. that's, that's that's he's going to start talking like Rick. It's like a whoopee cushion. <laughs> Keep it. You know what? Keep it. I've got one more. No, 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 it's it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's all good. It's all good. All right. Um. So, where did I hear that the glade was? Was it to the north? The north. Yeah. All right. So we have half a day trek to the north. Uh, a vault. So we should have to the. Lifts, go down the lifts, and then head north, and obviously look out for those shadowy blokes that keep bumping you. Uh, yeah. On the way, just in case. Does anyone else get bumped? 
Well, only by Taylor. What? And that's usually with her fist. That yeah, I'm keeping an eye out for these idiots. <laughs> Just pull your coat over your arm, like. <laughs> yeah. Blue blood is showing. <laughs> Respect my authority. Oh dear. So, as you make your way down the great elevators, um, you come to the outskirts of lower vaults on the northern side, um, and there is a trail which, um, not quite a road, it's more, it's been marched by people over the years rather than built, um, leading off um, across the uh, the flatlands that surround vault uh, into uh, what you can see on the edge of your horizon line is uh, some form of uh, of uh, forest. And so as you begin to make your way across it, um, there is a very sort of peaceful scent to this area. It's very strange after the number of days that you've been in the um, uh, in the city at this point to see such amount of greenery and uh, things like that. Um, however, your uh, sense of peace is short-lived as above you you hear a great cawing sound that seems to reverberate across the plains. Uh, as it's joined by a second one looking up you see two great winged uh, beasts above you as one of them folds their wings back and begins to dive towards you and with that we're going to roll initiative oh shit <coughs> oh damn okay okay not bad not bad could be worse mm. <laughs> there not one I suppose oh, okay no. that is statistically average <laughs> I do yep. love this shield and it's advantage giving <laughs> properties. <laughs> See, I had something prepared for this. Ooh. Uh. There we go. Uh, who's at the front and who's at the back? I guess I would probably be near the front because I'm kind of leading the way with okay. the directions and stuff. Yeah. So. And if it's dark, I imagine I'd have probably had to light up at some point. So, um, At this point, it's more like mid-afternoon than... Oh, that's right. uh, so it, it's it's not dark yet. I'll have been in the middle. Okay. I'd be I'll, be up, back, I'll be up but... with Randall. Why not? Yeah. I'd be at the back with with Julian floating towards the front a little, like okay. flying above us. Mm -hmm. All right. Give me a moment. Uh, I put together a map and forgot to make a token. Wah, wah. Ba -da, ba -da. Wah. <laughs> But, uh, fortunately, I have a very quick way to make them, so... <clears throat> However, they won't be on the map for the first round of combat, so... I can put you on. So it was Randall at the front alongside Warfreak, right? Indeed. Yes. Okay. Alright, Randall and Warfreak at the front, and who was behind that? Me? Okay, Taylor. Uh, and who is behind Taylor? Or perhaps next to Taylor? The road is wide enough to support two people. Are That's we doing the... I was going to say, are we doing the sandwich of Metal Man's at either end, but... Okay. Metal Man's. <laughs> Metal Man's. Uh, and then at the back then is Niss with Julian uh, flying off somewhere to the side to scout uh, I'll put him there so Done. uh all right initiative rolls please mm -hmm. uh 25 to 20 
That's surprising. Um, uh, okay. Um, uh, 15 to 20? Uh, 16. Uh, 19. 16 wow, look at that. Warfrick. I know. Great. It would have been a far otherwise. And then... <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. Um, Julian's dexterity 16. bonus is what? Sorry? Oh, uh, 13 plus 1. Mine's plus 30. 3. Okay. All oh, right. Um, and uh, ten to fifteen, please. Ten. Uh, Eleven for you is that Ness? Yes. And ten for you, uh, Reno. Mm-hmm. Uh, and five to ten. Oh, Joe. Oh, 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 I'm sorry, I got distracted by chat. I got 12, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> what were you sorry, Ness? 11. You were 11, right, Ness? Yeah. Okay. This is stupid bombs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, Wolfric, you're up first. As you look up now from where this screeching is, com is coming from, you see um, two very large-looking um, winged creatures. Um, they are resplendent with blue feathers on their wings. However, their torso is covered in a uh, dull orange color, and they have antlers on top of their heads. Um, their faces are more like that of a horse or a deer rather than a bird however they have rows of sharp teeth when, within their mouth and they're circling around above you at the current time a very good distance above you that's a bit weird uh, yeah so I'm just gonna uh, I mean I imagine they're way out of my range unless I want to instigate are they flying towards us, yeah? Uh, they are, are they currently currently circling right now. Okay, um, in... Yeah, I'll just cast um, Bless on... Uh... Yeah, I'll do it at second level so I'll get everyone else but me. So everyone's okay. blessed. Yeah. I imagine every time Wolfric does Bless, he's like doing that kneeling, what is it, power or something. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Nice. Right, walla walla. Walla walla. <laughs> walla walla. So, what does Bless do again? Remind me. Uh, it's you get to add a D4. Uh, D4 to your attack rolls and saving throws. All right, sweet. Uh, for a minute, is it? Or is it an hour? Uh, concentration to a minute. Oh, a minute. There we go. Um, so, uh, you cast Bless on everyone but yourself. So, everyone, mm. you are now blessed. Uh, which will bring us to Taylor. Okay, I will... How high up are they again, sorry? Um, right now they're about 60 feet above you. Oh boy. Uh, fuck. Uh, and there's lots of trees and stuff nearby, right? Uh, there's a number of trees nearby. You're starting to get closer to the forest now, so things are starting to get a little more dense. Okay, well I am going to... I can't really do much right now. I'm going to hide into in the trees, like over here, if I can. Under this brush. Okay. So I'm gonna go there. Yeah. Okay. Um, and as uh, your turn finishes. Um, now you see uh, one of the creatures um, as uh, begins to put their wings together and come barreling towards um, the group, seeming to aim uh, in particular for you, Randall. Um, and I would like you to make a... Uh, tell me your armor class, actually, sorry. 11. Uh, <laughs> 
So that would be a 19 to hit you as it comes in with large talons. Mm -hmm. That's going to hit. That rake across your back, um, dealing a grand total off. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, seven points of damage as these two talons just rake at your back, trying to like grab and pick you up. But uh, oh, my apologies, I forgot to add in a bit of extra damage. Uh, with an extra an extra eight damage on top of that for the the momentum oh, of it being carried down by its dive as they rake okay. across your back, you feel yourself almost be lift off lifted off your feet by the sh sheer force of these talons trying to pull you up. But you manage to hold on to the to terra firma as the the uh, the great creature once again lifts off and starts um, beginning to fly upwards. However, it doesn't only makes it around ten feet up before uh, its turn ends. Uh, so it is there. Uh, the second one continues now to fly in a circle above you, um, which will bring us to Julian's go. Julian is going to distract it to give me advantage. Okay, distract the one that's close by. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's about ten feet in the air above you, so. Um, there's you, and then it's 10 feet above you, so it's around probably a, around 18 feet in the air right now. Okay. Um, which brings to Arkson. So, this one next to me, uh, is yes. that in range for me to attack with my sword? It's not, no, it's about 18 foot ahead Okay, of then you. I instead will pull out my longbow and give it a couple of shots. Okay, yeah, you can do that. In fact, first of all, uh, I think I'm going to use a bonus action and cast uh, divine favor on myself. Okay. So, so now so has now have divine favor. Cool. So until the spell ends, I get an extra d4 radiant damage on a hit. Nice. Okay. Um, so make your bow attacks. Remember to add your d4 for bless. Yes. Uh. Longbow is there. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, not bad at all. 23. 23 will hit. Yep, and your second attack? Second attack. Uh, 15. Uh, a 15. Uh, that will hit as well. Both of them will hit. Excellent, you, right. It's just, just a bird, they're not they're hard to. So, DA. D A D four D four. Uh yep. Oh boo! I'm seeing a lot of ones there. <laughs> oh, there's an eight though. So on one attack that's a grand total of four piercing damage. Okay. I think no, no. Three piercing damage, one radium. Oof, right, okay. okay. And on the second one, uh, 10 piercing damage and 4 radiant. So I rolled minimum and max. So, <laughs> so yeah, nice help. As you pull the longbow from your back and an arrow from your uh, quiver at your hip, you find the first arrow slightly reefed in platinum light. As they impact into the creature, there is sort of a second aftershock of white light that bursts through them for a moment as it inflicts the radiant damage. One strikes into the flank of the creature, and you can see a spray of red as the radiant burst smashes into it. The second one hits, sinking deep, deeper this time, again into its flank. The, the shot carrying the momentum slightly as it pushes the wing uh, off balance of this creature for a moment, causing it to fall about in the foot about a foot in the air before it flaps its wings, gaining back its altitude that it had lost. Uh, and at the end of your turn, it's now misses, unless you'd like to move. Uh, I might spread I... out a little bit. Okay. That that thing's not in my range, is it? So it can't. It doesn't. You can't get. It can't get an attack of opportunity. Okay, on you. that does. Work. Unfortunately, roll twenty isn't very good at high. high. Uh, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. I just so I just have to say, it's eighteen foot above you. <laughs> oh, uh, oh! I should have checked out. Did the, the dice rolling noise was that loud? I didn't or hear, anything. I didn't hear anything. Excellent! It's All doing right. its job. 
Yes. <laughs> I will uh, attack it with a longbow as well, and I will use sharpshooter. Okay. Um, remember, you have advantage, and you have an extra d4. I l literally rolled a twenty and a one. <laughs> nice. Never mind the d4. Well, I mean, I'm happy about that, but what is it with these guys? All right. That's a twenty. You have advantage on the attack, so you do get sneak yeah. attack. Thank you. So that's double dice. So a lot should. of dice. Oh, I think this one's probably going to die. That is... Oh, 2D8. well. Oh. Hmm? 2d8 plus 6d6, I believe. Yeah. That is 2, 6, 9, 11, uh, 17, 23, 33, 37 damage. 37 damage. Okay, so as you loose the arrow towards it, Julian flapping about where uh, they believe a weak spot is, you aim towards uh, your fateful owl companion, firing the shot forward. It, uh, Julian moves out of the way just at the last moment as the arrow strikes into the side of this creature as its wing beats upwards. The arrow sinks in and you see as it goes all the way into the tip, the rock feather arrow uh, flying like a streak of orange through the air. And as it does, the creature begins to falter in the air and you see its wing beats for the next two get slower and slower before it stops and it lets out this anguished cry falling to the ground. It lands at your feet, this huge bird around like a five foot uh, wing on each side slams down into the ground, uh, kicking up a curtain of dust as it lays dead at your feet. I'm almost sorry. But I will still use my bonus action to hide. Okay. Uh, under tree. that tree. In that tree. Um, so, Randall. Uh, there remains one of these creatures flying high above you, around 60 feet up. And it is your go. Okay. Um, <clears throat> before I do anything else, I say, I think this might have been what they were cooking in the, uh, in the opal rock that we didn't know what it was. Um... And I would like to hold my action, uh, my attack action, um, to see if the other one is actually going to attack us. And if it does start making aggressive uh, moves towards us, then I will then uh, cast a spell at it. Okay. Yep. Um, otherwise, I will just hold my ground and stand next to Wolfric. Okay. And just see if, it, if it's going to actually attack. If it's not going to attack, then I'll let it be. Okay. So, that brings us to Wolfric. And what was sorry? What was it you were holding again, Randall? Um, I will be casting uh, my new spell, Scorching Ray, Scorching. at second level. Hmm. Okay. Good to know. And you're holding it for the trigger of it coming closer. Yeah, yeah. Well, if it's if it starts being aggressive, right. coming to attack. Okay, no problem. Yeah. All right. So, Wolfric. That's a shame because I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, with a guiding bolt. So, uh, yeah, if it's within 120 feet. Yep. Cool. So, guiding bolt. It's definitely within 120 feet. Uh, 14. Uh, 14 will hit, yep. Cool. Uh, so that's going to be 46. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, 15 points of damage. 15 points of radiant damage. As you um, hold up your shield, you you see it begins to glow with a, with your the pale blue energy of Helm. And as you slam your sword into the top of it, the ringing sound forces a bolt of energy from it, coursing through the sky into the, uh, the belly of this creature. As it ripples out this divine uh, force, you see... No physical damage to the creature, but its wing beats begin to slow slightly as you've obviously hurt it a lot purely from the force of this uh, radiant onslaught. Uh, which will bring us to Taylor. Uh, also, the next attack against it has advantage. Okay, so I'm going to use a spell that I forgot I had. And that I have prepared, so I've got a little dot next to it. I'm going to cast Earthbind. Okay. To drag it down to Earth. Mm-hmm. Go for um, it. So it must succeed in a strength saving throw. Okay. Uh, oh, 
to beat 16. I got nine altogether. So that <laughs> fails. Its flying speed is now zilch and it is it descends at sixty feet per round until it reaches the ground. Okay. And then it can um, fly. So at the end of your turn. Um falling out of the sky, uh being dragged down by um this strange unearthly wind current that seems to push it to the floor wrapping around its wings you see as its feathers ruffle in every direction seemingly caught in an, uh, in this strange current that is uh, Taylor's earthbind spell it slams to the ground behind um, you and Wolfric Randall um, in front of Arxen triggering, triggering your spell as it doesn't look like it's going away right okay then I need to make three ranged spell attacks for each yep. of the three rays mm -hmm. okay fortunately I have more dice now so I can roll them all at the same time oh. Hold up. before you need to do that I just need to check to make sure it doesn't die from hitting the ground oh. uh, because technically this happens simultaneously Um, as you go to cast your spell, the arcane uh, circle forming around your hand and the fire beginning to course into the center of your hand, you see the beast fall from the sky, tumbling through the air, its wings little more than, than counterweights, as it slams into the ground with a sickening crunch. You see it landed uh, on the side of its head, and the head is bent and the neck is snapped at the center. And without a sound, it is completely gone. Having taken its entire health in falling down. Oh shit. Well, and you just well, there you go. Stop chanting the spell and the circle of runes does not complete. Well What are these? Uh, but you do lose that spell. Oh. Yeah. Forever. Forever. Can I make a uh, nature check to see if I know what these creatures are? Mm hmm. You can. Uh, but I won't. 12. Um, it's fine. These are uh, creatures you would know about because they're creatures told about in stories. Mm. For slower in the DC. Um, you've heard of these, and it it's explains why none of you saw them coming. Um, because you did not see the shadows of any such creatures. You saw just familiar small shadows that you would mistaken for just any old thing because these creatures do not show the shadows of their true forms these are peritons um, monstrosities which uh, reproduce so the stories say by feeding on the hearts of humanoids hmm. uh, I mean they look quite impressive but I think it's for the better we took them out Cool. I want to take mm. like a couple of their Can... feathers yeah. and just attach them okay. to me somewhere. Yeah. Because I'm just um, going to collect the shit. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to take from them? They have long antlers. Yeah. Yeah, let's get Do we think this, yeah, any of this stuff will be. Let's get a trophy them, room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, unfortunately, there's no lightning there, no. Yeah. yeah well, it's a shame we could send, send word to. Um, might at the Opal Rock because I'm pretty sure they, this is what they were cooking when we were there last. It's about the same size. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, make a nature check for me, please, would you, Randall? <laughs> okay. Oh, God. This is going to go amazingly well. A nature check. Yeah. No, it's not actually too bad. I say it's intelligence, it's your ah. real pass. Yeah, no, I, I rolled quite well as well. Uh, that's 23. Um, from the physicality of these things and the size of them, this is probably what was being served, yes. Yeah. Even though it has the head of this horse-like being, it looks like a bird for the rest of it, and you sort of eye it with your hands and you're like, yeah, it's about the same size. Yeah. Some trigonometry, you know. Yeah. 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 
Can well, we take the antlers and uh, watch yeah, the Yeah, sure. Well? Um, can you make a nature check for me, but can you make it uh, with dexterity instead of yes. intelligence? Because yeah, you can 19. do that with skills in 5th edition. I did not know. That's a 19 rolled, plus 4, 23. Okay. Um, so, uh, you take out your adventurer's lockpick, also great for carving. Yeah. Um, and you slowly, uh, like, cutting around the antler managed to pry it forward and there's this little knob of, of like meat on the end that you you, you, you take a, a rag and you brush it, brush it off, pulling it off. I do have that uh, sort of uh, knife. You do have the skinning, skinning knife, knife as well. However, the horns of these creatures are very thick. I know for, uh, car for taking the meat off. I mean. Yeah, yeah. So you can you carve that off um, and you manage to get two of the horns in total. One of the creatures, both their horns were broken by the impact. Mm -hmm. So you only mean they managed to get the horns from one creature. So you have two periton horns. Uh, that's P E R Y T O N. P E R Y T O N. Y T O N. Yeah. Actually, seeing as we have a couple of good corpses here, should we uh, butcher them and have some tea? Yeah. Rather than waste uh, rations? Because we haven't eaten since this morning. Not a bad idea, actually. They were quite tasty. I mean, we can do if you want. Well, I mean, then we're not wasting the animal. Yeah. This is true. I have this handy knife I've never used. <laughs> now you can. Yeah. Just, just don't catch the innards, because then you'll spoil the whole thing. I know. Thanks. Just, I know, I'm just checking. <laughs> okay, um, we're going to use your previous nature check to uh, do this as you carve up the stuff. You get around three pounds of meat. Um, unfortunately, these creatures seem to be, in comparison to the ones that you saw, uh, well, the one that you saw that was dead uh, and cooked, these seem to be very emaciated. How many feathers do I get? As many as you want. Okay. All of them. <laughs> Just right next to mm. all of them. <laughs> Birds generally have a lot of feathers, so yeah. I don't know. Take anywhere between one and a hundred. <laughs> it's just how much time you want to Sorry, spend. I'm, I'm thinking of the Witcher 2 side quest. The, no? Okay. So, yeah. So, as you finish um, plucking and butchering these two gigantic monstrosities, um, let's not get into the uh, ethics of butchering something that is at one point human. Um, what? Oh, cool. We're like, well, I'm not a cannibal because I'm an elf, but uh, Randall. Wolfric. Um, so, um, hmm, yeah. as you continue to make your Long way hawk. forward after that, um, you eventually come to um, the rather abrupt edge of this forest. You'd seen scattered trees, but there was no sort of slow density increase. There had been a few trees, and then suddenly there is a line, and beyond that line is thick forest. And unlike the other forests you've encountered on your travels so far, um, these are not coniferous trees. These aren't pines and such. These are heavy hardwoods. These are things like oaks. Um, and some of the trees seem to have incredibly thick uh, trunks and a brilliant red bark to them, uh, redwood trees. But the entire forest is very thick and dense. It's no wonder you see it, saw it from half a day's travel away. Cool. Uh, would I know from what I had been told uh, how far in the glade is? Or the clearing? Uh, you wouldn't know. Um, your stories that your mum told you said that worthy people would find their way. Right. Well, if we're worthy, we'll find it. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Raise your hands so, to the sky. So, uh... I guess we go in and take a look. Is it worth leaving some kind of trail behind us to find a way out again? I mean, what could we leave behind? I'm not a big fan of just leaving. No, I'm not. 
I'm not. I'm not saying necessarily leaving stuff behind, but leaving like a little marker uh, or something on a tree uh, or something. I don't know. I. I mean, I don't want to carve anything into the tree because that might be frowned upon in a forest as this. Well, yeah, yeah, I know, but, but I'm. I'm just thinking like of getting back out again. That's all. I have a feeling that if, if we are deemed worthy enough to enter and, and find this clearing, this, this dryad, then we'll be able to leave again. Mm. Have okay. a little faith, Randall, come on. Or at I least know, we get I'm lost, just, it's I'm an adventure, just... yay! No, I know. We've uh, come back from worse. Getting, getting lost in a forest is a lot more difficult to navigate than getting lost in a city, though. There's not really any landmarks. <laughs> Yeah, we got lost in the Astral Sea, and we were fine. Uh, Ish. Yeah, yeah, but even the Astral Sea had landmarks. This is just forest. It's just forest and forest. Whichever direction you look, it's forest. Can't see the trees for the woods. Exactly what Arkson said. Hang on. <laughs> well, if we get lost, I, I, if I have a sit down. I can, I could, uh, I could talk to the plants, and I can find a way out. Okay. But I mean, if you have something you want to like, I don't know. No, like not a really. Flag just... or something. I don't know, but I don't. No, I feel I... like if we mark the trees, we might offend whatever lives here, and I don't want to do yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. You're probably right. Let's just head in. And start walking. Okay. As you step in uh, into the um, the wood, over the threshold into these woods themselves, um, it's quiet all of a sudden. Uh, the gentle sound of the breeze sort of stops as the foliage starts to overcome you. You take a few steps forward, and by this point, you are all encompassed in the woods. And as you continue to walk, without any real sense of purpose. It's strange, though you do not know where you're going, you feel like you're walking in the right direction. And suddenly, in your heads, as seems to have happened many times to you, a, a voice begins to talk to you. However, unlike most times in which the voice is rather eerie, this one is soft. It is peaceful, like a chiming of a tubular bell. Hello, brave souls. I see you have stumbled across this sacred place. I am the guardian of these woods, and I welcome you in. Pray tell, what is your meaning of being here? Perhaps you come to defeat that which has awoken? I look at Taylor. I do the same thing. <laughs> and then I just say to the air, um, we seek the Dryad. I was sent here. The Dryad sleeps. For they are entrapped. Something has awoken within these woods. But perhaps it is fate that you would come find it. Something has awoken? A bad thing? I dare not utter its name, for it may make its way into my mind if I do. Oh, that does sound bad. That sounds bad. Is the thing that awoken is that the same thing that has caused the dryad to sleep? It is. Then we need to take care of mm -hmm. the thing that has awoken because we need to speak to the dryad. Then it seems you were fated to come here. It would appear so. And that's where we're going to end the session. Ah. Ah. 
Yay! Yay! Sacred forests! Near the mountain! Sacred, 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 sacred forest! And I... I didn't even get to use my new spell. I'm sorry, Randall. I got to use a cool one. Yes, you did. So, yeah. yeah. Um, thank you all for joining us this week. Um, obviously, this is the new slightly shorter sessions because it helps keep us more awake because D&D is very exhausting, um, especially online like this. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this week. Uh, as mentioned at the beginning, there will be no session um, this this time next week um, due to all sorts of traveling going on um, but we will return oh. for the week after in which our brave party will see what they find within this sacred wood and then they have a tournament to get to yeah. um, <laughs> so as always um, you can catch up on Talavir by clicking the link that will soon appear in chat um, Make sure to follow us all on Twitter down below. We're all here. We can, you can, uh, if you have any questions to ask us, uh, feel free. Um, we tweet out every week when the session is going live and the day before, so that you all know what's going on. Uh, some of us do. I do. <laughs> follow, follow me. Um, no, follow me. Follow Joe too. Ignore follow. his words. And uh, we will uh, see you all in two weeks for on the, the next episode. Talavir, the 22nd. Oh, it's the week of my birthday, so... Oh, yeah. Yay. yay! Everybody bring cake. If you don't bring cake, I will kick you and ban you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Bye! I'll be checking. Bye, everybody. <laughs>